So for this video, we're going to be looking at the mid-carpal joint. The prior video, which is linked for you at the end of this video, was looking at the interplay between the distal radius and the proximal row of carpals. Now we're looking at the proximal row to the distal row, otherwise known as the mid-carpal. Additionally, we'll look at the intercarpal, that being uh, the interplay between each one of the carpals. Now, we should note with the intercarpal, uh, certainly you can assess the overall mobility here, uh, but really uh, the carpals are held together via intercarpal ligaments, and so when you're doing that, uh, there likely is less specificity that is needed and more just a comprehensive uh, assessment and then interventional plan of care. For the mid-carpal joint then, uh, specifically we're looking to assess and to improve wrist extension and wrist flexion. Additionally, we can focus on distraction as well. So let's begin with distraction. First, we want to stabilize not at the radial carpal joint, but at that first row of carpals. Our mobilizing hand is going to come right next to it. And then from here, we would provide that distraction technique. Additionally, we can focus on a dorsal to ventral and a ventral to dorsal glide. Our dorsal to ventral glide is going to help with extension, same as we saw at the radiocarpal joint. Our ventral to dorsal glide or volar to dorsal glide will help with wrist flexion. So let's begin with wrist extension. We want to stabilize our proximal row. From here, we're going to be going dorsal to ventral. Notice there's a slight distraction technique and moving into a slight extension. We're assessing for total mobility and then from there we could provide a graded mobilization. Conversely, if we wanted to look at wrist flexion, we would go from the ventral or volar side to the dorsal side. And so here we would change our hand from this position to this position here. And create our assessment. Again, there's a slight rectilinear assessment with this, recognizing um, the contribution of these uh, radiocarpal and midcarpal joints to flexion and extension. Additionally, while we're here, we can talk about the intercarpal joints. When you're looking to assess anterior to posterior or ventral to dorsal uh, and dorsal to ventral, what you need to do is to stabilize uh, the carpal next to or in proximity and then create a mobilization force uh, on the carpal that is next to it. So for example, if we wanted to mobilize the lunate, which is uh, a commonly hypomobile uh, carpal in individuals who have difficulty with wrist extension. We could come in on the more medial ulnar aspect of the wrist. We could stabilize the triquetrum. Again, make sure that we're actually on the lunate by going into a little bit of wrist flexion. The lunate pops right into my thumb here. And then we can perform our assessment here going from dorsal to ventral, which would help to restore wrist extension. That can be done for any and all of the individual carpals in the intercarpal joint space. So have a go with the mid-carpal and intercarpal assessment with a peer or colleague and let me know if there's any questions.